And welcome back. For most of us, paganism is nothing more than a word we heard in school history lessons, conjuring up perhaps images of bizarre rituals, witches and wizards, and people being burnt at the stake. So you might be surprised to learn that within the last few years, the number of pagans in Scotland has shot up from just a few hundred to an estimated 10,000. But what exactly is paganism? Why this sudden revival? And should we be afraid of it? Our next speaker says no. John McIntyre is the interfaith coordinator for the Pagan Federation. John, welcome to the program. You have two minutes to tell us about the revival of paganism in Scotland. Scotland is a country with many different religions. That's good. A free and democratic society thrives on diversity of opinion. I'm a pagan and I'm here to propose that Scots should welcome the revival of paganism whether or not they feel any personal affinity for it because paganism makes a positive contribution to our multi-faith society. I'll outline three of the ways in which it does so briefly here. Firstly, paganism is rooted in love and respect for nature. We see spirituality as something shared with the earth, with all other living creatures. Pagans see nature as sacred and find deep spiritual inspiration in the turning of the seasons and the patterns of birth, growth and death in our own lives. We celebrate the old Celtic seasonal festivals and we try to live our lives in harmony with the earth. Whatever our religion, we all depend on this living world for survival and pagan reverence for nature encourages a greener approach to life. Secondly, pagans worship goddesses as well as gods and priestesses take the leading role in most pagan religious ceremonies. We find it natural to think of deity, the divine, call it what you will, in female as well as male form. After all, life is born, not made. Through goddess worship, with its implicit recognition of women as figures of spiritual authority, paganism encourages further progress towards sexual equality. Lastly, paganism promotes religious tolerance. We don't seek converts and we find little point in people holding religious beliefs at all unless they result from a considered questioning and personal spiritual journey. As polytheists we take it for granted that the divine will appear to different people in different ways. The idea that only one religion can be true makes no sense to a pagan. It's like saying there is only one true language or only one true colour. Respect for the spiritual integrity of others is essential to any decent society, yet Scottish history is scarred by many centuries of religious strife and persecution. The pagan attitudes of respect and tolerance between different faiths are ones that some sections of our society could certainly benefit from. I believe that Scots should welcome the revival of paganism, even though the great majority aren't pagans and probably never will be. Paganism encourages love for this earth, sexual equality and religious tolerance and these are values we all benefit from whatever our religious beliefs. Thank you. John, thank you very much indeed. Um, some interesting points, very eloquently made. Let's, let's get reaction. Emma, can we begin with you? As a, as a Christian and a, a member of one of the, the established churches, um, you've heard what John said, love, peace, tolerance, in harmony with nature, we should welcome it. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds very, very good and very fitting with everything that we as a society are being um, sort of geared towards very politically correct, everyone is equal, but do you not think that there will always be religious um, beliefs in people, people who have, believe in, who have different religions and who will always have contentions? Do you really believe that it is possible to have a society where um, paganism can rule, if you like, um, and everyone will live in peace and, and harmony. Well, if I can answer by starting, we have no wish to rule. We don't see ourselves as a universal religion. We don't believe in universal religions. I think it's natural for people to hold different beliefs on religion. The only places that you see apparent religious hom homogeneity is in totalitarian societies, and none of us would want to live under that kind of system. So. I doubt you could ever have a society where everyone perfectly respected everyone else's beliefs and everything was peace and harmony. But I do think we could make much greater steps in the direction of tolerance and mutual respect 
than we've managed to do at present. Middle row in the white jumper, Elizabeth. Um, you spoke about there being different gods and goddesses. Yes. Who are they? And because as, as a Christian, or as you, you're sort of brought to believe in one God who made mm -hmm. the earth, and in one truth that you said that you couldn't sort of grasp or you couldn't believe that for yourself, what other gods and goddesses do pagans believe in? Too many to list comfortably in a short period of time. I think you've, you're a Christian, obviously, and you believe in one God, yet within Christianity as a world religion, there are many, many different interpretations of that God, some of which are almost direct, directly opposed to each other. Polytheism, the, the distinction between polytheism and monotheism can be overdrawn. Polytheism takes the position that there may be one unifying divine reality, which many people and groups interpret in different ways, or there may be di many different forms of divine reality which we call gods and goddesses. As human beings, we have no way of knowing which of these are true, and in practical social terms, it doesn't actually matter, so long as we respect the right of other people to come to their own spirituality in their own way. Uh, let's go to the middle row and, and to George. George, before, before we hear your question or comment, am I right in thinking that you study the occult as a pastime? Would that no, right not the that? occult. No, I, not More the occult. to do with New Age spirituality. Let's hear what you have to say. As I gladly welcome paganism into my life and society, as I have par big parts of paganism in my religion, but I believe that people do not understand it and are scared of it because there's not enough information or um, anything to do with paganism broadcasted out to people and they just have rumours <coughs> and fake ideas about what it is. Yes, there are many misconceptions about paganism in society, though fewer than there were 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, pagan organisations like the Pagan Federation put forward information people to talk about it, to explain it, but to some extent there's a fine line between explaining your religious position and pushing your religious position at other people. We are happy with our faith, it guides and shapes our lives, but other people have to make these choices for themselves. So while we do encourage people to spread information about paganism to counter misconceptions and prejudices, we are definitely not a proselytizing religion and we have no wish to actively convert people. Elaine, I'm not going to ask everyone about the work that's relevant in your case. Tell us about your shop. Um, I sell a wide range of products and I'm, I'm very interested in, I have um, symbols to do with the earth, the, the four <coughs> elements, and I, I do explain to people paganism because I have an interest in it. And um, there's a wide interest in it, but like you say, it's misconstrued. A lot of people have, um, you know, what they've picked up in books and stuff, and a lot of, I try and explain to them, it's, it's just to do with the elements, really. You know, a lot of people will say the pentagram, oh, it's evil, and, and things like that, and I try to explain to them, it's nuts, and we sell crystals and pendants, and, and a lot of things about the Celtic tradition, we've got Celtic horoscope pendants, and it's just a, basically all about nature. And it's, um, I know what you mean about not trying to, because then you're going down the Christian line. And like I was saying before, I think people should find paganism and then, you know, they'll, they'll find it. If they're meant to find it, they'll find it. But I know what you mean about the line. You don't want to go out there and publicize it. But I think with this program, I think there's more, um, people, people are more open-minded now. And they won't just read a newspaper, they'll see the deeper issues. So people are getting to know, you know, the truth. About this, about paganism. Yes. John, for, mm. forgive my ignorance. Before we go to, to our next uh, audience member, I mean, the, the Christianity bases its beliefs on the contents of, of the Bible, and in, in in Islam they have the Quran and, mm -hmm. and the Torah and, and Judaism. Where is paganism based? On, on what mm -hmm. set of beliefs? Where is it written? Christianity and Islam are doctrinal religions. Their central teachings are contained within a holy text, interpreted and developed over the centuries by the religious institutions that guide them. Paganism is an experiential religion. It's rooted in our direct spiritual experience of the sacred. So whereas a Christian might see divine inspiration in the words of their Bible, a pagan might feel divine inspiration in watching the leaves un uncurling from a bud on a tree or watching rain hammering down on the earth or watching the sun setting. Stephen, as a Christian, you've read about it. You haven't got out there and learned about it by doing it, apparently. Um. Well, just a, a first contention first with what, what was said there. 
I don't think Christianity was a religion of the book. I think you know, in the Hebrew in the Hebrew world, uh, in the Old Testament, it started off as a religion of life and became a religion of the book. And I think the same in the New Testament happened. It was a religion of life and charismatic life in the community and became a religion of the book later. But one of the main contentions I have is, I think the problem is uh, that we're having a boom in all walks of postmodern uh, spirituality. I think you know the new postmodern concept is that we've got a lot of spirituality, a lot of it's going to new age, it's a pick and mix religion uh, we have today. And I think the problem is, with, uh, from a Christian point of view, is that Christianity has failed to move on. I think Christianity is, like you said, is uh, not bothered about nature. I think it should be bothered about nature and the ecology and things like this, and it's left that behind. I don't think there's a problem between a male God. I think there has been a problem, the debate over women's ministry. I think, uh, you know, that's something the church has to put to an end and have an equality which, you know, is, is in God, I believe, as, as one God, not as plurality of gods. And so all the things you're saying, I think, should, should not be missing from Christianity. Uh, they just are. They've just left them behind. So whether we need a new religion uh, of pick and mix, or whether we just need a revival in Christianity, uh, that's, that's a contention I have with it. Firstly, let me apologise. I did not mean to interpret your own religion for you. I was merely giving an outsider's no, perspective on Christianity. Yeah. Uh, secondly, I'd have to point out that paganism is actually a very old religion. Mm -hmm. It is rather older than Christianity. Mm -hmm. So, although it has been underground or largely suppressed for many centuries, now that society is becoming more pluralistic, now that we enjoy freedom of belief for the first time in many, many centuries, then naturally you are finding the more monolithic so, uh, religious institutions breaking down and newer forms of spirituality emerging, which in many ways quite closely mimic the older forms of spirituality. I, th I don't think we should get too... We shouldn't have a sense that religious labels divide people. I can relate to quite a lot of what Christians say about their spirituality, and I know that the reverse is also true. True, Spirituality is something that connects all of us with the greater cosmos that we are part of. Different religions represent different choices and different experiences, but because someone has a different experience from you, because someone sees something in different terms from you, does not mean there has to be this undercurrent of hostility and opposition. John, explain this to me. Uh, there's nothing you've said tonight that could be uh, interpreted as being uh, uh, worrying or fearsome in any way. You're not even remotely intimidating yourself. Thank you. Why is there so much suspicion? You're welcome. Why is there so much suspicion, and in some cases, even fear about paganism? I think you're overstating the amount of suspicion and fear there actually is. Most pagans find that when they talk openly about their beliefs, their experience, their approach to life, that people do not find this at all intimidating or suspicious. There is a tendency, it's a, I won't call it a Christian tendency because it is much, much wider than that, to demonize what you don't understand, to project your own fears and uncertainties onto other people. If we look into not so recent history, we find horrific prejudices and outright atrocities being committed in groups such as Jews, Muslims today, Gypsies, anyone who was seen as different, anyone who did not fit precisely into the established order became a target for hostility and sometimes for actual persecution. I think it's that issue of why people come to fear and even hate something that is different from themselves that we have to address rather than seeing it as a conflict between different religions per John, se. For, forgive me, we're, we're now short on time. I want to try and get as many on these members as we can. Scott? Um, I'd like, I mean, I have no problems with a lot of what you're saying. I understand a plurality and I'm quite happy to live a plurality of religious tradition. My question is, what difference does it make to be pagan? Um, because, I mean, you're, you're very much about the individual exploration of the spiritual journey. Somebody might say their exploration of a spiritual journey is to kill people or gas six million Jews. What have you got to say about that? I mean, you, from what you have just said, you've got to tolerate that. Absolutely not. And I'm sorry for, I'm not, I'm not sure where you picked up the impression that we might. Well, Eth ethics ethics, every religious, ethics every are not a specifically religious concern. Ethics are something that non-religious people share as well. They're about how we live together. Now, we may feel, spiritual people may feel that, eth that their ethical codes are guided by the divine. But I think religious people, including myself, would be on very shaky ground in claiming that we are ethically superior to atheists or agnostics.
I didn't ask that. Well, uh, pagans in general, certainly all members of the Pagan Federation, guide their lives by the ethical principle of if it harm none, do what you will. This means you look at the likely consequences of your actions, you refrain from those that are likely to be harmful to yourself or to others, and you take responsibility for what you do. You don't blame other things for what you do. We're rapidly running out of time, Brian. I think we're coming back to what someone once described as the God-shaped hole, you know, the, miss the missing part of many human beings. And what I do feel is that, listen to the debate tonight, we must not all rush to plug it with our particular piece of the jigsaw. Mm -hmm. I think to fill that, jigs that jigsaw piece, we have to find many different ways and use all the different paths that are available to people and not get caught up in pushing somebody over the edge because we wanted our bit in first. In the back row, Richard, we have literally 10 seconds. Can you tell me who do you think Jesus Christ is or was? In just a few seconds. He is the God of another religion and a historical character. John, I wish we could let you go into that in more detail. I'm sorry we are out of time. Thank you very Thank you. much indeed for talking to us tonight. Thanks to our studio audience. Thanks to you at home for watching. Until the next time, please have a peaceful night. Bye-bye. Yeah.